I like you, do you like me? How's it going guys? Welcome to another video with Tim from Brew Bros. Today, we're going to brew our own Brew Dog Punk IPA. It's one of these little bad boys here. You may not know, but this is the best-selling craft beer in the UK. Brooklyn Brew Shop are licensed to produce um, a home brew kit, which is designed to be easy for first timers. There's two types of kit that you can get. There's a, there's a grain kit or an all grain kit, which as the name implies, you start with grain. Or there's an extract kit, which is even easier, which is basically um, the, the mash is done for you. So you just get a, like a gloopy um, wort in a bag. But at Brew Bros, that's not how we roll. We want to do the real thing with the grains. So that's what we're going to do today. So the kit costs £45, which is a little pricey given that it just produces 3.8 litres. However, it's designed, it's all pretty good quality and well packaged and it's designed for you to be able to use it multiple times afterwards. Right, so we've got our fermenter over here, uh, one gallon, 3.8 litres. Uh, we've got our hops over here. Uh, there's three hops. Interestingly, there's actually three hops missing if you look at the, uh, the brew dog recipe, but we'll come back to that later. We've got our sanitizing packet here, our yeast ready to party. We've got some tubing, a uh, tubing clamp for when we come to bottling, uh, a racking cane. Uh, we've got an old school analog thermometer, which I'm pleased to see because I just don't trust those, uh, those digital ones at all. We've got an airlock, uh, we've got our malt, and there we have it. There's no instructions in the box. So w when you open it, they say go online to have a look uh, and get the instructions there. So that's what I've done, one set of instructions. So what we're going to do, we're going to follow the instructions exactly. That's the instructions I printed out online. Um, I'll throw in a few bits of advice here and there. I'm, I've only been brewing for a month myself. This is probably my, I think it's my third brew. So I'll do my best. Um, you know, in, in that month, I like to think that I've probably become one of the best 20 or 30 brewers in, uh, in my whole village. So, you know, that's, that's pretty good going. So yeah, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll throw some advice in along the way. Um, there's one or two little discrepancies with the uh, brew dog recipe, which again we'll cover. So all that remains to say is, um, if you could sub right now, that would be appreciated. It's free, doesn't cost you anything. Um, when we get an email through saying that someone subbed, it genuinely makes our day. So sorry to harp on, and that's enough about that. Let's get our brew on. Hit it! The first part of the brewing process is what's called the mash. So what we're doing is we're taking our grain, uh, mixing it with our water, which is getting up to temperature at the moment. Uh, this is 2.4 litres and we're getting this up to 71 degrees centigrade. Conversions to Fahrenheit and gallons, ounces will all be on the screen. And what we're going to do, we're going to cook the grain for an hour, so 60 minutes. Now the key with the mash is you're trying to keep it within a certain temperature range. So we're getting this to 71 degrees centigrade, and then once, once our grain's inside, we're going to try and keep it between 63 and 68 degrees centigrade. Now that sounds easy, but when you've got a, a pot on a hob, it's, it's a bit tedious. So what, the method that works best for me, I just have it on the heat, then I remove it. Um, it retains heat pretty well, you know, it's not cold, we're in a house. So with your thermometer, you're checking till it gets uh, to that range. Uh, as soon as it gets too hot, you whip it off the heat. As soon as it gets below 63 degrees, you whip it back on again. And that's how it goes. When you're taking the temperature, obviously don't put the thermometer right down to the bottom of the pan where, it, where it's going to be hottest. Try and get it in the middle of the liquid. Take a few readings around the pan so it's going to be consistent. So Alexa's just told me that that is the end of the 60 minute mash. So we're now going to do what's called the mash out, um, which is where we raise the temperature to 77 degrees centigrade, just for the final part of the process. The instructions don't say how long to mash out for, which isn't overly helpful. 
So I'm going to do it for five minutes, and uh, that's five minutes once we get to 77 degrees. During the mash out, you're supposed to stir pretty much constantly. Still smelling great. And there we have it. That is the mash and the mash out finished. The uh, sparge is basically we're rinsing the, uh, the last of the uh, goodness out of the grain, which is why I've got the second pot here, which has got 4.25 litres of, uh, of water in at 77 degrees centigrade. And as you'll see, this is where the net pays you some serious dividends. So we now move into the boil phase. I mentioned earlier that there's some discrepancies between the, uh, uh, what's in this pack and uh, the BrewDog recipe, which you can find. All the BrewDog recipes are open source, so you can find every recipe that they do. Uh, there are three hops that are absent from this kit. Also, the BrewDog recipe says um, to dry hop, and it gives you uh, uh, three of those hops to use, and it suggests to dry hop prior to fermentation. So for the boil, what we want to do is increase the temperature now of this to, uh, to a nice rolling boil, nothing too violent, otherwise you lose a lot of the uh, fermentable sugars. And once we get that boil, the timer starts at 60 minutes. So we boil for 60 minutes and then we gradually add the hops. It'll be on the screen. So there we have it, that's the boil complete. Let's put the last of our hops in. In they go. Take off the heat. So you want to be at the 3.8 litre mark, and that's pretty much where we are. So if you find that you're under the 3.8 litre mark, just add a little bit of water to top it up. So we're now on the home straight of our uh, brew day. What we need to do now is take this, uh, this pot here with, boiling water, with the boiling wort in. We need to get it in the sink with some ice and some water, chill it down to 21 degrees C as soon as possible. Then we're going to strain it into the fermenter, pitch the yeast, shake it around, and we're good to go. Here we go, it's only been in there one minute. That's already cooling down nicely. I'm just going to put the uh, sanitized thermometer into it. See it's got a nice little ice bath there to sit in. Need a touch more water. That's good. So he's going to sit in there until he chills down to 21 degrees centigrade. Okay, so we're ready to transfer. Everything's sanitized. Good to go. This is a bit tedious on your own. As you can see, we've got a fair amount of uh, of crap. <laughs> it's not a technical expression. I believe it's trub. Trube, some say. See, it gets thicker as you go get towards the bottom. Because when it when it chills, a lot of the sediment falls to the bottom. So I thought this may happen. So time to introduce a sanitized spoon. We've got a little bit of foam at the top in the bottle, which is, uh, which is our sanitizer. Okay, that's that. Didn't take long to chill, probably about 15 minutes, maybe 20 actually, but you know, not bad. As you can see, these straining bags are worth their weight in gold. So that's all our wort into the fermenter. All we've got to do now is pitch the yeast. Pitch is basically just toss it in but it sounds fancier. Here it comes. Mm. 
Now what we need to do to distribute the yeast nicely is sanitize the palm of the hand. Grab it. And give it a good old shake. This is basically waking the yeast up, getting it ready to rock and roll. Also aerating the wort a bit. There we go. What we need to do now is put our breathing tube on. There's this little contraption here. Again, you've got it. Get the clag in there. Sanitize. Sanitize. On she goes. Right, folks. That's all she wrote. So what I need to do now is, uh, is transfer this to a dark room temperature place. We have quite a cold house, so that's the airing cupboard. Uh, it's gonna sit in there for two weeks. This breathing tube here um, is going to go into a cup like that. And the cup's gonna be hot, about half filled, half filled with sanitizing solution. Because obviously the first couple of days of uh, fermentation can be a bit violent. And then uh, after a few days, we fit the airlock. Good to go. I'll see you soon. It's alive! As you can see here, we've got our fermenter out of the fridge after cold crashing. It's looking pretty good. It's looking pretty clear. As you can see, there's a fair layer of sediment down there, a good inch, if not more, um, which is good. So that's uh, the cold crashing has done its job. So there's three parts to this process. One is that we create the priming sugar, which in this case is done with honey. Um, that's what they recommend. So we're using that, uh, the, the sugar in the honey, to reactivate the yeast and get that partying again. Uh, and then we're going to transfer from the fermenter to the pot, and I use the same pot that I brewed in, just the metal pot, and then we're going to transfer from that pot to bottles. So before we uh, get on with the action, a word on sanitising. Just make sure you sanitise everything that comes into contact with the beer, whether that be pot, bottles, tubing, your fingers or hands, just sanitise everything. That's a really important part of uh, this phase. So it's just regular clear runny honey three even tablespoons into half a cup of water, uh, cold water this is, on the, uh, on the stove just to, just to mix it. Just add our honey and water mix to the bottling bucket. Okay, so with the clamp open, we're putting this in, the tubing into the water here, which is uh, a mix of uh, water and sanitizer. The racking cane we can keep out of the water. And what we want to do is fill that tube, fill that tube with sanitizer up until up to there, which is the uh, top where the bend of the uh, racking came in. So once the uh, once the tube is filled with the sanitizer, you then just clamp it, clamp it, and let the uh, the sanitizer in that part, that part of the tubing leak out, and then you move it over to your uh, your fermenter and pot. Okay, so we insert our cane into our beer. That's where it would be helpful with two people. Uh, what we're going to do, uh, basically this is using uh, gravity and suction, our two amigos. I've got the clamp closed at the moment and I'm going to release the clamp. And this all happens quite quickly, so you might want to practice first with water just to get a feel of it. Um, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to release the clamp and then gravity is going to force the sanitizer out of the tube into the bowl I've got here. As soon as it starts running as beer, I'm going to transfer it over to our pot here. As the beer starts flowing into the pot there, uh, we want to get a nice whirlpool effect to make sure that the beer mixes with the honey solution, the priming solution, nicely. We're opening that now. I don't know if you can see that, but we're getting a nice bit of whirlpool action. And we also want to make sure that the end of the tube in the beer is submerged into the beer because otherwise you introduce a bit too much oxygen and we don't want oxygen getting in there. Okay, so we're now going to repeat the process, but now we're using the pot instead of the fermenter and we're gonna transfer the bottles. Um, obviously, exactly the same way. 
put our wrapping cane in there. And this, this, this part does happen quickly, so uh, you've got to pay attention. Uh, right, so we're going, uh, as you can see, I'm, I'm using swing top bottles. Um, I like swing top bottles because they're easy to work with and uh, they let the dogs twitcher as well. So yeah, what you need to do is release the, uh, release the clamp and watch the beer flow. So once again, I'm going to make sure that the pipe in the bottle is submerged so the beer fills up and it doesn't get too oxygenated. And that's it, that's all she wrote. Just make sure we sanitize our lids when we put the, uh, the stopper on. So there we have it, bottled beer. These babies are now going to spend the next two weeks in a uh, dark place at 19 degrees centigrade to carbonate, and you carbonate good. Welcome back to the action. It's been a month, and it's now time to taste the beer. Here we go, brew dog glass and a, uh, a chilled bottle. It's a nice bit of fizz when I open the bottle. Nicely carbonated, as you can see. Probably a little bit too carbonated, actually. So the honey's obviously done its work, its magic. Pretty happy with that. Smells great. Quite happy with the clarity. Yeah, it, it, it's very fizzy. Uh, it's certainly more fizzy than the original. Let's give it a go. Yeah, it, 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 you don't get the same overwhelming aroma of hops as you do with the, the real thing. That's probably because of the three hops they miss out and they don't, uh, the Brooklyn Brew Shop kit, you don't dry hop. So it, you, you can definitely tell that. It tastes great. You know, for a stove top brew, I'm, I'm really impressed with that. I won't go into too much detail because Ed and I have made a separate video, link up in the corner where you, uh, we go into a bit more depth about it and the, and the taste and comparing it with the real thing. So all I can really say is it's, it is a great tasting beer. It's not a perfect punk IPA, but it's, you know, it, it's pretty close. Uh, the Brooklyn Brew Shop kit is great. Highly recommend it, uh, particularly for someone who's never brewed before. So by all means, give it a go. Let us know how you get on in the comments and uh, we'll speak to you soon. Take care.